In the beginning, when Bill Casing spent his time looking through many photographs that NASA released, he was shocked to find many photographs that appeared to be taken with the aid of fill-in lights or reflectors. Fill lights are artificial light sources used during film and theatre productions in order to bring up the detail on the shadowed side of an object, like a key prop or an actor's face. Likewise, reflectors are also used for this purpose. It is important to note that during the Apollo missions, the astronauts did not bring any artificial lights to the moon, nor did they bring any flash photography. This means that the only lighting up there would be that from the sun. I think we've all seen the famous Buzz Aldrin photo with Neil Armstrong reflected in the visor. Despite the fact that the sun is clearly behind Aldrin's left shoulder, as illustrated by his shadow pointing away from his front right, we can clearly see that the front of his spacesuit is lit up. In fact, we can clearly read the words E. Aldrin on his nameplate. Bill Casing was the first to pick up on this discrepancy. As he wrote in his book, Light is ostensibly from the sun behind Aldrin, and yet his faceplate is illuminated. If so, where is the source of the illumination? It would have been shown in the faceplate from the position of the cameraman Armstrong, whether flash or floodlight. Another photograph, taken from Apollo 16, of astronaut Charlie Duke, shares this same anomaly. As Bill Casing writes, What is the source of light on the faceplate? This should be in deep shadow as the sun is behind the figure. Also, if the source of light is artificial, it should be reflected from the faceplate. Because no light source can be seen reflected in these visors, this led David Percy to conclude that these reflections were superimposed into the image. This false reflection must have been composited or painted in over the original image. The reflection we see in the visor cannot be that of the photographer of the image. When presented with these arguments, propagandists claim that this is simply the sun's light reflecting off the lunar surface and illuminating the shadowed side of these objects. This counter-argument was recently propagated on the Mythbusters special dealing with Apollo moon landing conspiracy theories. My attention to this was brought forward when somebody, possibly the Mythbusters themselves, posted this segment in response to my earlier video and blocked me from posting on their channel. They even added my name to the comments page of the video clearly indicating that this was a premeditated attack. Long before the Mythbusters released this special, I long suspected that they would somehow screw up their experiment and continue to peddle it as evidence for their cause. It seems I was right. Watch. The next task in our moon mythbusting is this photo here. What conspiracy theorists say is that He's too well lit. You can see him clearly, yet he's in this black, black shadow of the limb. There's only one light source on the moon. That's the sun. Conspiracy theorists claim there must be a second one making him visible, and we're going to find out. And to do just that, the guys are going to shine a substitute sun on the very model of a modern miniature landing module. Oh, and a surprisingly talkative toy astronaut. This is my 1-6 scale model of Neil Armstrong. Tell it's Neil because he's got the red kind of
commander of the mission stripes on his suit. What's that, Neil? We really went to the moon. I know. But the thing is, is that in order to prove that, we got to take some photographs. And to take some accurate photographs, i got to make a ship for you, a home for you. Okay. So these rolls of paper behind me are actually a lunar landing module in Potentia, which I'm about to slap together. And courtesy of what's known in the editing biz as a few jump cuts, here it is. Conspiracy theorists are saying that the shot had to have been faked using a fill light. Personally, I think it's because the moon's surface is reflective. And when you think about it, you look at the moon on a clear night, it's obviously reflecting light back at you. That's why you see it. The question here is, is it enough to create this shot? To test Jamie's hypothesis that the mythical fill-in light is simply sunlight bouncing back off the moon's surface, the guys black out the set. Behold our moon landing set. Because it's all about reflectivity, we put blacks all around the shop, covered the whole set to eliminate any spill, any reflected light that's not coming directly from our moon's surface. That's the landing module, astronaut, lights, and camera sorted. Dude, this looks so cool. The only missing component is a moon dust analog that accurately reflects the reflective quality of the real stuff. The dust that covers the moon is called regolith. When the sunlight shines upon the moon, regolith reflects a certain amount of sunlight back towards Earth. That reflective quality is called its albedo. Now, the albedo of moon dust is between 7 and 10 percent, according to our sources at NASA. To make our version of regolith, we use Portland cement and charcoal powder. Now, to measure the albedo, or reflected light coming off of it, we used Whoa. a light meter and our fake sun. 8 percent, dude, that is perfect. What we just showed with this test is that our sample regolith has a reflective index of about 8 percent, which makes it ideal for us to test with. The best part about working with Jamie is that he doesn't need a dust mask. The reason he's not wearing one is because his mustache provides all the particle filtering he needs. The mock-up moon's ready for its close-up, so it's probably time to up the Jeopardy. Cue our resonant drama king. This is the moment of truth. We've got an accurately shaped and textured moon lander, and we've concocted an accurate moon surface that has the same reflectivity index as the actual moon. If the myth is to be believed, our astronaut on the dark side in the shadow of the lander is going to just fade to total black when we try and take a picture of him. All right, you ready? I'm set. All right, here we go. Taking the photo. Let's see. There it is. Oh, there you go. He's standing full on in the shadow, and you'd think you wouldn't be able to see him. He'd be dark, but he's not. He's in brightest day. The myth here is that you would not be able to see this astronaut this clearly unless there was a secondary fill light illuminating him. Because he's in the shadow and there's only one light source on the moon, he would, by definition, be black. Our photo here proves just the opposite. That with a single light source, with the surface of the same reflectivity as the moon, our astronaut is clearly visible, busting that net. The artificial lunar set that the Mythbusters used is absurd, to say the least. To start with, for their fake lunar surface, the Mythbusters used Portland cement. To make our version of regolith, we used Portland cement and charcoal powder. I have no idea where they got the idea that their surface had an albedo of 8%, because according to the American Concrete Pavement Association, newly applied grey Portland cement has an albedo of 35% to 40%. Even if weathered, it will still have an albedo of 20% to 30%. Not only is this albedo much, much higher than the moon's, it is also in the vicinity of the albedo of the Earth seen from space. Earth shines much brighter than moonshine. Well, in fact, um, when the astronauts were on the moon's surface, they had a real problem from the glare uh, from the Earth. But of course, that's because the moon has no atmosphere. But the Earth itself is an incredibly bright object. It has a much higher albedo than the moon. What percentage would you say? Uh, I don't remember the numbers. It's like 30 or 40 percent. It's a very high number. It's much higher than the moon. The maria on the moon are very dark and very absorbing. And so you only get about, as you said, about 4 or 5 percent. But the Earth is much, much higher albedo, much, much brighter. And if you think that is way too bright, try white Portland cement. 
According to the American Concrete Pavement Association, newly applied white Portland cement has an albedo of 70 to 80 percent and weathered it has an albedo of 40 to 60 percent, which is about twice the amount of light that the earth reflects. On his website, Jay Winderley claims, the Mythbusters took great pains to achieve the proper reflectivity of the lunar surface. But as we've just demonstrated, to try and simulate the lunar albedo, the Mythbusters used the one type of cement whose lowest reflectivity is more than three times as bright as that encountered on the moon.